Britain's Queen Elizabeth II has formally opened the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in London. It is the first time Commonwealth leaders have met since Britain voted to leave the European Union. The summit offers the British government a platform to promote its post-Brexit trade agenda. CGTN's Kate Parkinson reports. A 53-gun salute representing the 53 Commonwealth member nations marked the official opening of the Heads of Government meeting in London. While in the ballroom of Buckingham Palace, Queen Elizabeth welcomed the Commonwealth leaders, telling them that the group is now stronger than ever. And we seem to be growing stronger year by year. The advantages are plain to see. An increasing emphasis on trade between our countries is helping us all to discover exciting new ways of doing business. Issues under discussion at the two-day summit include climate change, security and trade. British Prime Minister Theresa May said they will be tackling some of the biggest questions of the 21st century. How we support our most vulnerable member states as we tackle climate change and improve the health of our oceans, creating a more sustainable Commonwealth. How we develop through trade, pushing back against protectionism for a more prosperous Commonwealth. How we respond to threats to the rules-based international order and from cyber attacks, creating a more secure Commonwealth. Brexit is not on the formal summit agenda, but on the sidelines and during informal moments, British officials will likely try to steer conversations towards post-Brexit trade deals. As it prepares to leave the European Union, Britain is hoping to secure new free trade agreements. Key targets among Commonwealth nations include Canada, New Zealand, Australia and India. On Wednesday, Theresa May met with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to talk trade and sign off on a series of commercial agreements worth up to £1 billion. As one of the world's fastest growing economies, the benefits of securing a post-Brexit trade deal with India are clear. But the idea that the Commonwealth can equal the European Union as a trading partner has been widely dismissed by experts, as has the notion that striking new deals will be easy. Kate Parkinson, CGTN, London. We can now cross over to London and get you more on the heads of government meeting and joined live from London by our correspondent Paul Barber. Paul, so what more can you tell us though about the highlights of the heads of government meeting today? Yes, well, welcome to Buckingham Palace here on this absolutely gorgeous spring evening. Unseasonably hot here in London, a heat wave even. And this is where all of the action has been today with uh, many of the heads of government from those 53 members of the Commonwealth here for a welcome ceremony with Queen Elizabeth. Uh, many of those uh, heads of government from Africa, of course, we've had Cyril Ramaphosa, the new president of South Africa. We've had Mohamed Buhari from Nigeria, also Uhuru Kenyatta from Kenya. So uh, they'll all be back here this evening for a big gala dinner hosted by Queen Elizabeth. They were also uh, greeted by Prime Minister Theresa May and the Secretary General of the uh, Commonwealth, Patricia Scotland. And, you know, this is something Britain does very well, all the pomp and pageantry with all the military music. And, yes, yeah, certainly uh, this is when things really got into action. But, of course, many of those heads of state have been in town for uh, a few days to discuss uh, business deals. And uh, Queen Elizabeth thanking all of those uh, heads of state for being here and the Commonwealth very close to her heart and indeed to her her father's heart, who uh, was the first head of the Commonwealth uh, in 1949. Uh, a poignant one as well for Queen Elizabeth as London hosts this, uh, the first uh, Commonwealth Heads of Government uh, meeting here in London to be held here in 20 years and could indeed be her last uh, as uh, head of the Commonwealth and as, as Queen. Well, uh, Paul, aside from that uh, gala dinner that's to be held at uh, Buckingham Palace, though, leaders are heading to Windsor Castle as well on Friday for a retreat. So what do we know about that? What's that about? Yes, they'll be heading uh, down to Windsor Castle, one of the Queen's other official residences. Uh, one of the major topics that they will be discussing and actually voting on is who will succeed Queen Elizabeth as the head of the Commonwealth. It does not automatically pass to the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, her son, who is the heir to the throne. Uh, although today she expressed in, in fairly strong terms for the Queen uh, her sincere desire 
that her son be elected the next head of the Commonwealth. Uh, some calls from the Commonwealth itself saying, well, why can't this be held on a rotational basis, held by somebody else from one of the other countries in the Commonwealth? But Prince Charles indeed would himself say that he's been training for this job his entire life and he has visited most of the countries of the Commonwealth. Also, the younger generation of the royals taking a much more prominent role in the Commonwealth. Prince Harry uh, and his uh, soon-to-be wife, Meghan Markle, have been uh, taking on a more of a, a prominent role in the Commonwealth. Another interesting matter for discussion for those heads of government in the privacy of this retreat at Windsor Castle tomorrow is the potential readmission of Zimbabwe into the Commonwealth. And we've had the, the Foreign Minister of Zimbabwe, Sabuzio Moyo, in London as, a, as an observer of this meeting. And there's uh, certainly some sentiment that Zimbabwe could be readmitted. The head of the Commonwealth said that um, there is a process for that. So that will be an uh, interesting development that we may hear tomorrow. And the uh, summit's theme is uh, towards a common future. What are the most important challenges, though, that leaders will be addressing under that theme? Yes, well, as we heard Kate say, uh, the environment is certainly a huge topic for discussion. And uh, today, in fact, we had a major announcement from the British government saying they were going to look into the banning of plastic straws. But more broadly, the uh, issue of plastic pollution in the oceans, a major topic for discussion, and also more generally climate change. This uh, heads of government meeting, uh, Chogham as it's known, uh, was due to be held in Vanuatu, um, but that was impossible because of the destruction wrought by uh, Storm Pam back in 2015. So just highlighting the vulnerability of some of the much smaller states in the Commonwealth uh, in, in the South Pacific, for example. So certainly climate is very important. Security also, for the first time, is going to play a really central role in the discussions of the heads of state, uh, specifically cyber security, so some measures being uh, discussed there. But uh, trade is really what uh, most of the heads of state are really interested in, not least Britain, as it looks beyond Brexit at the end of next year. It's keen to see the Commonwealth and its uh, uh, nearly two and a half billion people as uh, the heart of uh, what this global Britain idea should be and certainly looking to increase trade with Commonwealth countries and many of those Commonwealth countries here to, uh, in London this week especially South Africa have been keen to uh, attract more investment from Britain and from other Commonwealth countries too so money and trade certainly a major major factor for them all to be discussing and we should hear more from the final communique due on Friday as well but uh, tonight still uh, more of the fun and the pomp and ceremony as that gala dinner soon gets underway here at Buckingham Palace. Back to you. All right, uh, Paul Barber joining us there outside Buckingham Palace in London.